What's up my friends, welcome back, you're watching half video audio stuff and in this video I want to show you why using the Sony exposure meter can be a detriment to your video, why it can lead to exposure problems and why I believe it should almost never be used. The goal of this video as always is to help and entertain. So let's do it. Just one quick bit of housekeeping before we dig in. These videos are powered by my Patreon backers. The idea being that it's a non-profit thing and any funds from Patreon I'll use to buy equipment and then give away to you once I finish reviewing it. It's just a really elegant way of improving my content, which I'm hoping is pretty good already. Plus you get the opportunity to win some awesome gear. So really it's win-win. So if this video helps you in any way, consider checking out the link in the description box below. Just to be super clear, this video is about shooting video and not stills. I'm not a stills guy, even though I enjoy taking photos, but just know that we're, we're all video here. So that little exposure meter on the bottom of your rear screen exists in video mode as a hangover from when this style of camera only shot stills. All cameras have them, as you half press your shutter to focus you get a vague indication of your exposure. But as still shooters have the unbelievable flexibility of shooting uncompressed raw files, they can afford to be a touch on the vague side when it comes to exposure. When it comes to video guys, we don't have that luxury. If at this stage you're not quite sure what I'm talking about, basically your camera looks at your image and tries to determine if it's under or overexposed and represents its findings as a number of stops on a scale of minus two to plus two. Actually, the reason I wanted to make this video was the amount of questions I was getting from people asking me to advise them on their exposure settings based on the exposure meter reading. And I can't do that because of course I'm not there and I can't see what's happening. Secondly, I don't know the shooter's style, and that's a factor. Needless to say, an exposure meter reading is an insanely bad way of communicating exposure when we're dealing with potentially quite a complex image. And this is just my opinion, but here's why. Firstly, the exposure meter doesn't account for the style in which you're shooting your footage. Maybe you're shooting a murky, low light, low key scene, or what about a sunset with a subject and you've got no lighting, what about live music event? So here we go, how do you like this exposure? This is actually two stops underexposed. Pretty good, yeah, really detailed, like it. And how about this? This is exposed at zero. This is apparently correctly exposed according to the Sony exposure meter. Great, eh? Love how much you can see in the scene. And then how about this? This apparently is two stops overexposed, but is it? I mean, you can probably only just see my face at this exposure. And then how about this? I've pushed it a further two stops overexposed. The Sony exposure meter will only show you a limit of plus two, so you don't know how many stops over that you are exposed. My guess is this is the best one yet, but now let's go and have a look at another example. On top of this, it does a pretty poor job of interpreting exposure in S-Log3. This is mainly because the exposure meter is designed to work with the full contrast images that cameras display when you're shooting stills and not the extremely low contrast image you get with S-Log3. When you think about it, 13 or more stops of dynamic range squeezed into a very small luma range is bound to confuse it. Let's look at this shot for example. And I remember that at the time the exposure meter was telling me that this was overexposed despite my waveform on my external monitor showing me that it wasn't going to be and that's just because a large proportion of the image is the sky which is quite bright but of course I didn't want to underexpose the main feature of the image which is this stunning hotel it's just a classic case of the videographer and the exposure meter not agreeing on the flip side we have this image where my exposure meter was screaming at me telling me this was going to be underexposed because it was seeing what was going to be lots of shadow area and almost nothing towards the highlights and that's exactly what I wanted. I really wanted to lean into those really rich golden autumnal colours and often a lower exposure is a really great way to do that because it tends to accentuate the saturation of your image. Even using other metering modes won't necessarily give you a helpful indication of exposure. Let's say you're shooting some video and your subject has a darker skin tone and you switch over to spot metering and you meter their face. Your camera may be metering as underexposed compared to say this pasty face, but would you expose differently? 
No, of course not. So this might seem a bit odd, but I'd love it if Sony would give us the option to turn off the exposure meter. And I know you can turn off all of the information on the rear screen, but I still want to see my settings. So what should you use? Waveforms? Zebras? Histogram? Uh, I mean, all of these are better options in my opinion, but my favorite personally is waveforms using an external monitor. I just find them so much more useful. They give you so much information about what's happening in your scene. As for zebras, I've had thoughts of making a guide of how to use zebras in different filming modes on the Sony cameras. If that's of interest, let me know and I'll see what I can do in the comments. I get that it's not always possible to use an external monitor with waveforms, say if your camera's on a gimbal or something like that, but that's when you can switch to these other exposure tools. So when could you use exposure meter? Well, I would say any of the more contrasty filming modes on the Sony cameras like Rec. 709 or Cine 1, 2 or 3 or 4, but still it doesn't take into account the style in which you want to film. So it's time to recap and gather everything in this video, pop it in the doggy bag of tips for you to take away. Exposure meters give you a vague and largely inaccurate indication of your exposure. However, it doesn't know what you're trying to film and won't take into account the style of scene. I say you're smarter than your camera, so don't trust the exposure meter. The exposure meter is especially bad at interpreting exposure in log modes. They're not designed for this purpose, so this is no surprise. So better options for tools for exposing the footage are, well, anything else. Zebras, histogram, but especially waveforms. Exposure meters do work a little better with linear profiles, but it's still not advisable. Anyway, that's all for now. I just hope you found this video interesting and helpful. That's always the goal with these videos. I want to hear from you. Do you agree? Or do you actually love the Sony exposure meter? What's your preferred exposure tool? I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. I've got a large archive of videos about videography on this channel, of which YouTube has picked this video for you, and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video.